I was comparing Jackson State Southern. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you said so you said Jackson State and Southern is like LSU Alabama. And Grambling and Southern is like Michigan, Ohio State. Correct. Can you explain that? Like why, why So you know what, let me rephrase that. Okay. Grambling and Southern is the Ohio State and Michigan mm-hmm. of HBCU football. Like it it doesn't get much bigger than that. It doesn't. That's like the pinnacle. I would say LSU, Alabama, but I only say that because in these recent years, since like what the twenty tens, the early little late two thousands, that's when LSU, Alabama's rivalry really intensified. Really, when Nick Saban got there. Correct. That rivalry really gained some heat, knowing that you know he started off at LSU, mm-hmm. ended up going to Alabama. But truth be told, the only other rivalry that comes under Ohio State, Michigan, to me before LSU and Alabama was UCLA, USC. Mm-hmm. And that's what Jackson State and Southern is to this way. Uh, okay. This is what they like, their close proximity as well. I would, I would compare that rivalry to that. Okay. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> Out of, uh, okay, in the Western Division, we have two first-year coaches. Yeah. First-year head coach that I know of, at least. Mm-hmm. So what do you think Dooley can bring to Southern this year? So, there's a lot of excitement in Baton Rouge with Dooley coming to Southern. I think, you know, if you don't know, Dooley is a product of Grambling State. He also attended Southern in graduate, yeah, graduate school. He was on a coaching staff with Pete Richardson for over 14 to 17 years. So, yeah. So, Dooley, you know, he's not his, he's no spring chicken to the sweat. He knows what he's doing there. So, he was at Pine Bluff. For a while, he was the coordinator there. Then he was the coordinator at Grambling. That's not for his story. Right. Then at Grambling, that's when he got his job at PV. Mm. And at PV, I mean, that's how I really realized that Dool is a great coach. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to recruit PV? Do you really know how hard it is? I never thought about it. They're in the heart of Houston, basically, mm-hmm. right next to Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. They, don't have, they didn't have the best of facilities compared to high schools in Texas. All right. So, in order for PV to win, you got to be one hell of a recruiter. Mm. So, truth be told, Dooley, he won a lot of games with PV, but he could never win a SWAC championship, basically because of Southern. Right. So, with him coming to Southern, with his coaching pedigree, mm. and his, you know, roots being at Southern, mm. I think they're going to they're gonna make some noise this year. This year? Mm-hmm. I didn't I, I I didn't like when Dooley went to PV mm-hmm. only because I grew up a Gremlin fan. Okay. You know, my family went to Gremlin, played yeah. Gremlin. So <laughs> like you said, man, he went to PV and made PV basically the second okay. runner up behind Southern. He used Correct. To always be Southern Gremlin. But he Correct. Didn't not Gremlin. He not Gremlin out the. Out but the because place. of that, the, the swag was really needed that. Because right. I mean, every year it was either Gremlin Southern, Gremlin, Gremlin Southern. Southern for a long time. So long. what's crazy is. I tend to forget about it too. This is the time I really love to forget when Stump Mitchell was at Southern. Ugh. Those were some those were some badass days. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. So like during that time, of course, Grambling was still winning, but that's also during that time Texas Southern even won a swag championship. Damn. Exactly, Texas Southern won a swag championship. Pine Bluff was in when I believe they won it as well. So it's just like you know, it takes a lot. So like when these teams, like, like look at it this way. Pine Bluff went to a swag championship during the spring season. Mm-hmm. But what do they have now? Virtually nothing, right? I couldn't tell. Like, last, before last year, we all knew Texas Southern wasn't going to do anything. Right. Texas Southern came close to beating Jackson State mm-hmm. last year. They beat Southern last year. Granted, Southern had a bad team, yeah. but Texas Southern was in every game and last I don't, year. I don't even think Southern had a bad team. They just always found a way to lose. Well, when I say a bad when I say a bad team, I let me rephrase that. Yeah. Southern had the athletes. Right. They had the they had the players. They didn't have much coaching though. Okay. Their uh, head coach that they had as an interim, mm-hmm. he's more of a recruiter. Okay. They said he was one of the best recruiters in the state. Mm-hmm. But I mean, a lot of people say they didn't give him a chance because they only gave him one year. But I mean, well, with Southern, I hate to say it, they're they're a powerhouse in this way. The perennial winners every year, so yeah, they they right. wasn't gonna keep them that long. What uh, what they say, come with it, or, you know, get with it. Get man, with it. it's tough on the bluff, man. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> so uh, okay, so we talked about Dooley, mm-hmm. the Dooley era. This far, we'll be able to see that. 
How about Hugh Jackson at Grambling? What do you think about that hire right there? I think I think it was a good hire. Mm-hmm. It was a much needed hire in the swag. You know, I think we need to bring some more star power caliber coaches right. in the swag. Granted, I mean Hugh Jackson didn't have the best stint as a head coach in the league, but I mean he's been coaching football for a long time. Mm-hmm. I think he brings a, a different culture in the Grambling, one that I really used to. They he recruits more of the West Coast. Okay. Grambling is, as you would know, with them big boys up there like West Monroe, mm-hmm. Natchitoches and everything. Ground and pound, right? right? He's gonna bring an air raid to the to the G Men this year, I believe. Which isn't a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's just I think I think how can I say it? I don't think he has a big head, but I don't think he realizes the actual competition they have in this whack either though. Uh, of course. Yeah. Do you feel like the transfer <clears throat> portal in the NCAA has helped the SWAC tremendously? It has. Uh, it, it, it has. We've, I've seen over the last, how many seasons has it been? Two or three seasons? It's, yeah, it's been around. Yeah, it's close to a, three now. A lot of notable players have came to the Southwest Athletic Conference through Correct. the transfer portal. And I think that'll help out a lot with the competitiveness, the anticipation, and everything. I, I feel like, uh, especially schools like Southern and Grambling, they've been utilizing the transfer portal extremely well. And, and can't forget Jackson State, of course. Yeah, so. Trying not to talk about Jackson State, but I mean, honestly, yeah. truth be told, you, you really have to give Dion his respect. Right. Because truth be told, I mean, who was really mentioning the SWAC before Dion Sanders? No. The last biggest thing from the SWAC was what? Gramlin, you know, not playing in 2013? Not, I, think, I think so. That was probably the last time it was, we really made. Right. Made, made some buzz. Anything. Correct. Right. So it's like, you know, with all due respect to uh, Jackson State, they, I think they did a good move. When they first made the hire, I just said to myself, it was a PR move, which it is at the end of the day. Yeah, but he's true. actually bringing in, like, top-notch right. equipment. He even, like we saw, he's bringing in his own money to make sure that these players are right. good. So and the fact that he got the, the number one overall recruit to come to Jackson, Mississippi? What? Yeah, you, 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 to, you gotta give him his respect. To come to Jackson, Mississippi? As much as I, you know, start to despise Jackson State and their fans, you, you gotta oh, give it up to them. Uh, shout out to Travis Hunter, too, because when, when Travis Hunter made that decision to go to uh, Jackson State, mm-hmm. we saw a lot of people and a lot of coaches and a lot of fans, true colors, at these Power Five schools. They was, they was acting crazy, man. They, they said a lot of things that didn't have to be said. And I feel like, you know, you we shouldn't really be mad at a teenager for making a decision that's best for him and his family. So just imagine this, though. Mm. Travis Hunter's just the first. The first. What's going to happen if other top recruits see what type of games are played in this way? Right. Just imagine coming to the Boom Boss Classic. You got the human jukebox. You got the Sonic Boom. Pre-game. Yeah. Blasting at each other. The game even starts yet. Yeah. That's a hell of energy. And that's then when really you cool. actually play? Yeah. Because even on, as a man. fan, you get butterflies. So just imagine that as a 17-year-old recruit Come on, man. on the sideline, you see all these people that look like you with these bands playing. And so, it's I mean, it's right. like we got to start giving back to us. Right. For the longest, you know, we always say, you know, you want to make it out the hood, you want to do great, you want to get to the league, you got to go to a power five. You got to go to the big-time colleges. Mm-hmm. When truth be told, when you look at it, all these Hall of Famers, what schools they coming from? <laughs> Can you name one LSU Hall of Famer? Can you name one Alabama Hall of Famer? Out the top of my head, Hell exactly. No. I can name about 10 out the swag, right? Yeah, exactly. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Not only the Hall of Fame, the Super Bowl winners at that, Ex- correct? They got gold jackets and diamond rings, correct? So, I mean, come on, man, yes, yeah, it's only right. I really hope you know, I could say this, but it is what it is. They're gonna do what they want to do, mm-hmm. but I think once like everybody else in the swag gets with the program, I hate to say it that way, mm-hmm. we start updating our facilities start competing against more FCS competition instead of just playing against HBCUs, right. I think we'll be in good shape. Right. 